Steve, the so-called fine-tuning of the universe, where uh, a couple of dozen of the uh, so-called free parameters of physics, the independent constants, seem to have need to be in a very small range for there to be a universe at all, as we know it, galaxies and stars and, and human beings, uh, is a very controversial area uh, in, in physics um, in terms of some people thinking those are that, that's a very good way to even do pure physics, people who are atheists. Right. Uh, and, and, and on the other hand, some theists use that as indications that the God uh, I- exists. Uh, first of all, let's look at fine-tuning per se. How confident are you, as a theist, that this universe is fine-tuned? Because some physicists say it's an illusion of fine-tuning. I think most physicists who've looked into this uh, would agree that the laws of nature that we observe have features in them which, have, which are fine-tuned in some cases. Some cases, they're just gross qualitative features. But they have features which are it's just right to make it possible for there to be life. I, don't think, I think that's less and less controversial, actually. I think the controversy is over what to make of that. I, things have changed, actually, considerably in the last 20 years. There was a time when people would, would resist that conclusion. But I think you find people like Hawking, uh, and other atheist scientists admitting that the laws as we observe them have certain features that appear appear fine-tuned for life. So I don't think it's that controversial. Well, so, so, some would yeah. say that if you vary them independently, and some would say that we're basing that on a carbon system of life. Right. I mean, th- th- there are different critiques of that. That's true. That's true. On the other hand, uh, there's what is logically possible and what is plausible. I mean, when we go and look for life, it's true. If we change the laws in certain ways, it would make life based on chemistry impossible. And you could say, well, then maybe life could be based on something else. Maybe life wouldn't be based on chemical reactions, but nuclear reactions or something else. Yes, logically that's possible, but I don't think many physicists would find that plausible. I mean, you could imagine there's life inside the sun. You know, uh, there's complicated plasma Mm -hmm. physics going on in there and magnetic field. There could be life on the surface of a neutron star. Logically, that's possible. That's not where we're looking for life in the universe. We're looking for it on planets, Mm -hmm. and we're assuming that it's basically based on chemistry. Mm -hmm. So there's what's possible and what's plausible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the controversies uh, 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 about uh, fine-tuning at the current time, assuming that that the majority agree that the universe in some way is fine-tuned? I think the main options, and this is where I think the big debate is, is whether it appears fine-tuned because these apparently fine-tuned parameters are actually varying from place to place in the universe, so far away outside our horizon. It actually, these things take different values. So it's not that the uh, mass of the electron is tuned to make life possible. The mass of the electron is taking different values in different places. It's a big lottery, and there's bound to be places where it has the right value for life. Mm. That's the multiverse idea. And so that, those are the two options. It's either the, these parameters are the same everywhere in the universe and were chosen to make life possible, or it's a huge lottery where these parameters are varying all over the place and, they're hap- and there's inevitably a region where they take the right values. And that region of this multiverse would be a very, very small percentage of, of the it, whole but, of the whole shebang. Right. Yes. I mean, in, in calculatingly oh, small. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I mean, what would you? You know, far less than one percent. Uh, oh, no, no, <laughs> in, 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 <laughs> to ten to the virtually minus. infinitesimal. Yeah, yeah. Correct. But of course, the universe is is enormous. It's, it's well, if you have infinity, then you can. Have, it, could, <laughs> it doesn't even have to be infinite. But there are reasons to believe the universe is in exponentially bigger than even the part we can see. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and so the habitable parts might be very tiny relatively. Uh, where do you see this argument progressing? Do, 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 do you see any evidential um, uh, help that can lead this, or has it basically become philosophical? It's, it's, I don't see how we will ever know if we live in a multiverse, observationally. Uh, so in that sense, I don't think it'll be empirically decided. The whole multiverses have to be such that the, these constants are the same throughout the part of the world we can see. By, by definition. Because we know that they're constant throughout that part of the universe. So by definition, almost, we can't observe whether we're in a multiverse. The only hope would be we find the ultimate laws of physics, maybe superstrings, we solve the equations, and the equations tell us whether we're in a multiverse or not. Oh. 
tall order. <laughs> yeah, and uh, in, in, in either case, yeah. a theistic worldview would not have a problem with e either one. I don't think uh, religious people have a dog in that fight. <laughs> I, as I, uh, I think that... M many think so. Well, many think so. Actually, many religious people sneer at the multiverse idea and say, yeah. the multiverse is cooked up by atheists to avoid the obvious conclusion right. of fine-tuning. It's not true. Most atheist scientists actually hate the multiverse idea yeah. precisely because it's almost certainly untestable. And the same reason they reject God, because he's not testable, hmm. they reject the multiverse because it's not testable. So yeah. actually, I think we're probably stuck in a philosophical debate forever <laughs> on this. And the lines are not clearly drawn. There are religious scientists like me who like the multiverse. There are atheists who hate the multiverse. <laughs> right. And there are, uh, there are atheists who like uh, fine-tuning. And yeah. there are, well, who, 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 I'm not sure how many atheists <laughs> like the fine-tuning, but some of them may be willing to live with it. <laughs> well, Steven Weinberg famously uh, worked on the cosmological constant. Uh, well, he used the multiverse yeah, idea for yeah. that. So he liked the multiverse. Yeah. I have, I, I, uh, I've done work on, on fine-tuning problems. And actually, the paper we wrote on, on a, a very important uh, piece of fine-tuning in the universe. We assumed that it was a multiverse in the paper mm -hmm. that was responsible for this. Did, did that affect the, the nature of the, of the paper? Or whether you no, because in multiverse? a sense it doesn't matter. All, you, doesn't matter, all right. you say is, if this parameter were different by this amount, would there be life? And then it's a separate question of uh, why it came to have that Right. Yeah, that value, right. Right. multiverse or God, that, that's outside the scope of this. But, but you feel that this will be a philosophical problem that will be with us? It's uh, going to be with us for a <laughs> long, long time, uh, maybe forever.